Welcome to Crewe, located in the northwest of England. Step back in time and discover the soot and sounds of the steam era. Climb aboard iconic living locomotives hungry for coal and water and work hard on busy passenger and freight services through historic Merseyside and Cheshire. There's an empty poster over there. Fix that while you're here. There are more tasks to find. Be sure to refill sand buckets, fill coal sacks, place travel posters and light braziers. Follow the markers to board the train. Take a seat in first class. You can sit in any available seat. You can pause the experience at any point and review previous and current objectives. Check it out now and then return to the game when ready. This train is powered by an LMS Jubilee class steam locomotive. These were built between 1934 and 1936 and originally nicknamed Red Stanniers because of their original crimson livery, but later earned the nickname Jubilee when one of their class was named Silver Jubilee in recognition of the Silver Jubilee of King George V. During your journey as a driver on this route, you'll learn to drive this locomotive as well as the LMS Stanier Class 8F, a freight locomotive. You'll learn to haul a variety of different freight between the bustling yards and perform both express and local stopping passenger services. Learn all there is to know about operating these iconic locomotives in an era when steam was king. Welcome to Train Sim World, Spirit of Steam, Liverpool to Crew. Welcome to Ashford International, located in Kent in the southeast of England. Situated directly between London and the Strait of Dover, Kent has always been an important link between the capital city, the coast and mainland Europe. Today HS1, previously known as the Channel Tunnel Rail Link, provides an essential high-speed connection through this historic county for both domestic and international travellers. There's a missing route map over there, fix this while you're here. There are lots more tasks to discover throughout this route. Make sure to apply all the route maps, place newspaper bundles, patch holes in the fences and place safety signs. Your train has arrived, let's climb aboard.
This train is the British Rail Class 395 Javelin, manufactured by Hitachi. Ashford Station originally opened in 1842, although it has gone through two significant rebuilds since then. First to provide electrification, and then again to facilitate international travel. On a typical year, around 4 million domestic and international passengers use this station. This route runs for over 60 miles between Ashford International and London St Pancras, as well as an additional 30 mile link between Dartford and Faversham. On this route, you can experience a unique and exciting blend of classic mainline running and thrilling high-speed commuting aboard state-of-the-art motive power. This is Train Sim World, Southeastern High Speed, London to Ashford and Faversham. In this training module, you'll be learning how to use the TVM in-cab signalling system. At high speeds, trains may take longer to stop than the visual range of the driver. The TVM 430 in-cab signalling system alerts drivers to changes in speed from several kilometres away. So you're currently around Dagenham, Essex, just before Tunnel 2 and heading towards London St Pancras. In this training module, you'll be driving westbound into London and understanding all the indications that the TVM system is giving you to safely complete the journey. You'll be stopping at Stratford International and London St Pancras. The TVM system splits the line up into a series of blocks. The start of these is indicated by a TVM block marker. You can see these along the side of the line as a yellow triangle set against a blue background such as the one directly in front of you now. Get the train moving and let's get going. Most of this journey is going to take place in tunnels and that will make it easier to focus on the TVM indications coming up in the cab. The first difference you will notice when driving on the high speed section under TVM control is that all the speed indications in the cab are in kilometres per hour, while the other non-TVM controlled lines are in miles per hour. The train will automatically switch between the two. The TVM 430 display is made up of a series of indicators on the top centre of the control desk, and you will see numbers lighting up in various positions as you go. Only one number will be displayed at any time, and this number is your current maximum permitted speed. This is also shown on the HUD, with a blue marker. As you get started, you can see that the train is showing a 225 display, meaning that our maximum permitted speed is currently 225 km per hour. Keep accelerating! Diving into Tunnel 2 bound for London. 
As you approach Stratford International, the TVM system will begin slowing you down, ready to stop. And this will be explained as it happens. In a moment, a 225 indicator will begin flashing. That means the next block will be at a reduced speed. You don't need to do anything now except prepare to slow down. Next, you will see the indicator change to show a flashing 200. This means that you should now be slowing down to reach no faster than 200 kilometers per hour by the next block marker. Additionally, since it's flashing, you know that the next block will be slower as well, so you can continue braking. Wait for the indicator to change and then begin to slow. The indicator will next change to a flashing 160. Once this has appeared, continue slowing so that you are no faster than 160 km per hour by the next marker. It is flashing, so you will continue to be slower at the following block too. The TVM system will next show a steady 100. Once it has appeared, continue slowing down to no faster than 100 km per hour by the next marker. Since it is steady, you know that TVM will not be slowing you down further. As you exit Tunnel 2 into Stratford International Station, apply brakes as needed to come to a stop. Great work, you've stopped at Stratford International. For this training module, you don't need to open the doors, so let's get going and do the second leg of this journey into London St Pancras. 
you won't receive any further guidance on how to understand TVM. Use what you've just learned. It will be a similar approach slowing you down out of Tunnel 1 into London St Pancras to the one you just did. As you get started, note that your maximum permitted speed is still 100 km per hour, but it will rise to 225 km per hour as you enter Tunnel 1. Remember, flashing indications mean that the next block will report a lower maximum permitted speed, and when you get a reduction in maximum permitted speed, you have until the start of the next block to achieve it. From here on, TVM is shut down and the indicators will have gone. Now you're back to relying on route knowledge or the HUD to know about upcoming signals and speed limit changes. Watch for speed reductions as you continue your final journey into London St Pancras.
That concludes the basics of driving under TVM. Rerun this training module in the training center whenever you want a refresher on how to understand the TVM 430 signaling system. In this training module, you'll be learning how to switch between the third rail and overhead power modes in the Class 395. This needs to be performed at Ebbsfleet, when a Class 395 service switches between the DC third rail lines between Ebbsfleet and Faversham, and the overhead power lines between Ebbsfleet and London St Pancras. OK. You are just outside Ebbsfleet Station, heading in the direction of Faversham. Begin by getting the train moving and pull into the platform. Please review the Class 395 training module if you would like a reminder on how to make the train start and stop. Now that you're stopped in the platform, get the doors open and then you can start the power change process. Hold the DC button until its indicator light comes on to switch to third rail power mode. This will also lower the overhead power collector, called a pantograph. You will see the line volt light has gone out, meaning the train has no power at all, and the MCB VCB light has come on telling you the circuit breakers are open. Press the pan up shoes down button to lower the third rail shoes and draw power to the train. The line volt light should now be lit. This shows that power is detected. A few moments after the line volt light comes on, the MCB VCB light will go out as the circuit breakers are automatically reset when changing power in this direction. Congratulations, you have successfully switched power modes. Close the doors and pull forwards to the indicated marker on the track, so that you can get ready to try this the other way around. You'll find that the train is slower to accelerate under DC power than when on the overhead lines.
Okay, it's time to change ends. First, you'll need to deactivate this cab. Move the reverser to off and then remove the master key. Exit this cab and move to the other end of the train and sit in the driver's seat there. Now you're ready to activate this cab and head into Ebbsfleet as if you are a London-bound train. Insert the master key and move the reverser to the forwards position. Pull into Ebb Street Station once the signal is showing green. Open the doors and then let's switch to overhead mode. You will need to do this at Ebbsfleet when driving a Class 395 towards London. Press and hold the CTRL button until it lights up to switch to overhead power mode and raise the third rail pickup shoes. Press the pan up shoes down button to raise the pantograph. The line light should now be lit. This shows that power is detected. However, it is currently isolated by the master circuit breaker or MCB. Press the pan up shoes down button again to close the MCB. You Finally, close the doors and pull forward out of Ebbsfleet to prove your power is working and stop at the indicated marker.
Congratulations, that's all for this training module. You should practice this module until you're comfortable with the process so that you don't run into problems in the middle of a longer run.